Hello, good people. Welcome to the Small But Massive podcast. This is a short series of six podcasts capturing voices from the Spurns. My guests were Anne McAllister, Ollie McQuigan, Hugh McKenna, Paddy Gray, Lawrence O'Kean, and Damien Hearn. All well-known people in the local community. These people were involved in music, dance, filmmaking, the arts, and business. All things that Glasgow Bay is doing now in the Corn Store Creative Hub. So check it out, good people. Thanks to the Department of Communities, Arts, Culture and Heritage Fund for supporting the making of this series. Ollie, are we respectable? We're respectable. Well, I feel respectable being beside you. And, mm. uh, as well, we, you're, you're used to being with McGuigan, so you should feel respectable. Should be, feel it on there all. Sometimes <laughs> I do get emotional in these moments. <laughs> so mm. I'm going to, this is a, a Heart of the Community uh, podcast too with the brilliant Ollie McGuigan, cinema, cinema projectionist, actor. Actor. I remember you being a very famous Santa. Correct. And, yes. Uh, I think in your early days, uh, I remember uh, you worked in maybe Hernbrars for a wee while. And you yes, had also had a shop. You were a bit of an that's, entrepreneur. That's how I got into the cinema, because the actual shop was in the yard, in the yard, the old cinema. Deadly. And then we moved on up to your... We, the, I call the back lane the M2 now. Uh, you used to have to walk up after school. I certainly did, Ollie. Yes. And uh, I was, and, and, and so how did the cinema first come about? And how was it, you know, who, who well, built it and why was it built? The, well, Heron Brothers, Heron, John, them, and John actually walked in the two, done the, done the lamp as we talk about, and chucked you out if you're a misbehaving. Uh, would there have been much wee curtain going on? Or? There was in the back seat, but uh, the, at that time, unfortunately, the old cinema was an old shed. Yeah. And there was the odd rat running about. Oh, so you either thought you were getting your leg felt up, but it really wasn't your the leg. The girls in the back <laughs> seat didn't say nothing. <laughs> they, they didn't, didn't know any better. <laughs> Although they were on with a couple of rats. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, if you wanted a bit of a curtain, you got to the back seat. Ah, that's uh, really, you were leading John, and John used to lead them up to the back seat. And a lot of the ones that's, that was there at that time were all laid and gone. They even uh, Young girls and uh, boys. Uh, do, do, you, do you, I suppose, um, being in there, uh, you'd be remembered, uh, you'd have been a very uh, memorable face for people being in there that would probably been stopping you in the street and asking, what's on, Ollie, and, yeah. you know, what's, what's, what's happening? Well, my, my, first, uh, my first job would have been selling ice cream for John Joe Lagan at the cinema on a Sunday night. There you go. And during the summertime. And I mind taking them from the wee shop down at the Fulcahar Road. And John Joe was a big biscuit tin full of big 60, what do they call them, 99s or something? Oh, 99s. 99, a big uh, double size slider, uh, as we called them sliders. And, uh, had you only so long to sell them before they uh, melted? Correct. <laughs> See that? <'Cause> <laughs> we had to have them sold. There was an advertisement, there was a, what they called a short film on, 20 minute film on at the start, and then there was advertisements. I had to be in. At the advertisements, well, right enough, the advertisements last 10, 15 minutes, but if you were looking ice cream, I had to come through the door with a tray. <laughs> had you a wee hat no, no? No, 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 just no. A tray, one of them trays. Uh, but one night I went down and I meant saying to Brady Mullen, God rest it was yeah. my, who was Brady, my... Uh, Peter Keen. P- That's the very boy. And Brady was in charge at the office, and I mean going to Brady and saying about this ice cream I'm selling, this for you say, and then... Uh, he says, but you need to uh, you need to hold on to the advertisements comes on. So that was okay. Advertisements come on, and then somebody inside said to me, Dennis McNamee, God rest me, Dennis that owned the bar, you know. Sunday night was his Just the Burns' corner of the bar. Yeah. Know, yeah. Correct. And that's what the sentence there was still a bar there now yeah. too. But he uh, he said, You don't you don't look the part. He says coming in with an old tree. He says Put your hand up above and have the tray be the way that... Turns you push? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Come in with, it, in with the tray like that there. So I just filled the tray up. So I did nice and up, good and high. So maybe about two dozen, like 99 <laughs> oh, so Some money there, all. The, <laughs> how much were there for just... Right, right. The, they were thruppany, thruppany bit, I think it was. Thruppany bit? Yeah. And what would that be now? Like nah, the people well, out there listening. Well, what what uh, is it, thruppany uh, bit? Uh, we'll say 150. It would be, it'd, it'd be up on a pound now, yeah. A pound, aye. Uh, but uh, I mean, talking about accidents on your first run, <laughs> and just 
as I went through the door, John Heron, I think it was John, opened the door for me to let me in. And of course, I was making the entrance. And if I didn't trip on the mat. <laughs> oh, no. It was a Monty Python moment. <laughs> and all you could see going through the air was an empty day. <laughs> and they landed on the floor. And like the floor was filthy. Uh, so was. You couldn't but recycle them. Didn't even get cleaned every day during that time. Uh, <laughs> but I took a very in on Aunt Brady right enough to give her to his Brady sister. Well, that was an awful thing. She said, bring them in here, look. See, we brought my and Brady had a knife and she skipped every side. <laughs> Did you recycle? On the tray. <laughs> Then I just wanted to know how I got them done so uh, soon. Did to go back for a new batch? <laughs> <laughs> That's so my that, was a, that was the end of the ice cream run. So uh. for the night. <laughs> but then I went on up. I, the, the next session with the fellowman was uh, Peter Mullen. Peter and Bernard got arrested. The wife were great Derry fans at that time. Yeah. Had to go to all the matches. But Derry was playing somebody in Dublin, Cook Park. And a win the days beforehand, just Peter came into the shop to me and he says, oh, he says, I'm going to teach you how to operate to show the films. I said, I said, that's all right. I said, I'll, I'll do it. I said, how long will it take? He says, well, it would, it, it would need to take about three to four days because the match is on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I couldn't believe it. I said, I, I wouldn't be fit to work because I seen Peter work on machine. Oh. That time they had two machines. Yeah. Was it real? Was it two like projectors? Tip, tip, was it real? It was real? big films on uh, reels. Yeah. And each reel was 20 minutes long, so it was. Most most reels, unless the last one was a shorter, but they yeah. ended. But most reels would have been 20 minutes to go through the projector. But there, there was a starter, what they call a leader, on the film. And that was always leading into the film, you know. One, like a wee three, intro. Four. Yeah. yeah. And, Oh, we, You'd see yeah. it many times. Yeah. And at the end, then, I'd, I'd done the same. But at the changeover, there was on the top right-hand corner, and the old black and white films, I still see them yet, and I still see them myself. How many times did I press the button to get the changeover? I know. And that, when the first one appears, you're on the second machine, and you start it, and you've at least up till 10, and it goes around 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3... You're on to the next. Yeah. You, you press the other machine and you're into the second. The second. Yes. Yeah. Sure yeah. So that was all right. That was going well. Peter had taught me all this. But the uh, that next Sunday night was actually a Sunday and plus another Sunday. And Ben came on and I said, Peter, I'm dead and doing this film. Were you young at the time? I, w- I would have been, uh, what age would I have been? I'd have been 17 or 18. Jeez. I was in my teens. There you go. Definitely. He says, uh, oh, he says, he says, you're a bit all the time for paying you a compliment. Uh-huh. He didn't, didn't matter what you done. <laughs> so he'd blown me up to get, to get away to Dublin. <laughs> so that was all right. The night come anyway, and it was a west. A Sunday night was always a western, so it was. Was it? Right? Cowboy uh-huh. uh-huh. What kind um, of films then back oh, then? The Durango remember? Kid, it's a color. Uh-huh. Not many people mind who Durango Kid was. Uh-huh. Or Buffalo Bill Buffalo and Bill. Uh, Wild Bill Hiccup. And, yeah. Uh, Gene Autry, Roy Rogers, all of them, oh. they're all singing cowboys. Oh. But, uh, and did people sing in the, in the auditorium? No, 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 they no. didn't sing. No, Joe no. was on there with a lamp and you'd have got a thump in the head. <laughs> 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 or you weren't allowed to sing along with oh. it. But he, um, I remember anyway, on the, on the night, this picture was coming, the film was coming. It had come up on a Friday and Peter built it up these... Put, he had to put the come loose in the box. Yeah. And you had to put them onto these twenty minute reels. Yeah. So Peter had them all on and come to me on the Saturday night and he says, Everything's ready. All you have to do is lift them out. One, two, three, four, five, six, whatever it was. <laughs> so that was all right. I said, That's all right. He says, I know I know you'll do the job all right. Did you not even get a wee trial? No, no, just well, I was up and I seen him doing it. Uh, Many a time he had been uh, out for a smoke and uh, I would have done the changeover. Uh, uh, no problem. Yeah. That was the lacing up. Uh, yeah. But I had learned the lacing all right. That was fairly straightforward. The next thing was then on the night, the film that was coming was, uh, I can't remember what the name was, it was a cowboy, a western. Yeah, it was a western film. And the usual thing in a western film is there's always a fight in a bar. <laughs> throwing... <laughs> <laughs> chairs and throwing <laughs> stuff and uh-huh. this and that. So I got to the last reel anyway, and uh, whoever was going on to pick a fight with the cowboy that just moved into town was going to get picked on. <laughs> so the, the row started on its foot, and then the next thing was the last reel. 
Cairn. And uh, I hit the button when I seen the first one. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Change over. And the next thing, up in the bar, in the cowboy film, was a gangster film. <laughs> All of a sudden, it changed from Western to a gangster. I'm trying to re- remind you a wee man's name, uh, Al Capone, who Aye. was it, the wee boy. Aye. Humphrey, no, no, it wasn't no, your man, trying to remember his Cagney or something. Uh, James Cagney. James Cagney. James Cagney. Yeah, yeah. So James Cagney, he was up on the counter with a <laughs> Uzi machine gun, <laughs> riddling everybody. <laughs> <so good. laughs> Can you expect this dude to come out with one six shooter? <laughs> and I looked out the window again and I said, "What? What's going on?" Here? And then all I could hear was. And said, you see, that everybody would have done their feet. <laughs> sort of and there was an old wooden floor, and you could hear the thump of a boy. That was thunder in the roof. And I looked out again here. He was still rattling around the bar. And the next thing landed up the stairs was Roseanne. Gallagher Rose was there. Yeah. She says, what are you doing? I says, what, what's wrong? And she says, everybody's out complaining about the film. What happened to the, the reel with the cowboy? And I says, I, says, I, I don't know he says, Rose has nothing to do with me. I says, that's the way the film will come. And Peter put it together and he showed me everything. I says, there you go. So now, she had to give everybody back their money. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the money all had to be paid oh. back. Uh, Sunday night of all night, because oh. people from Lisson, oh. you know, there met, was ones, five minutes There was ones there. bought up, asked them people out for a week hurt that night. Oh, and it all which, went is, wrong. which is they were home earlier than they thought. <laughs> <laughs> the black bikes and the, sat on it were way the up last, the green gas. The last reel, but that was one episode so it was. And I mean, the next one then was uh, again the following going wrong. And but this time I was full experience, yeah. but I was doing it nearly full time at that time because Peter was starting to look for retirement. Ah. And uh, on the Sunday, <clears throat> there was a wee French student over visiting Pat Burns. Bruno Fleury, they call it. And Bruno... <laughs> Bruno uh, Fleury? Fleury. Bruno. <laughs> Fleury. F-L-U-R. How did he introduce himself? Hello, I'm yeah, yeah, Bruno I'm Fleury. Bruno Fleury was here last year with me, just seeing Rosa still about. Was he? Yeah, <laughs> checking up on me. <laughs> Jesus. But Bruno had landed and then I was then working in the factory at the time and he would have called down. He stayed with Pat, he was an exchange yeah. student. At Burns' factory, yeah. was it, all? Mm-hmm. Just out the, the Tumwell Road? Yeah. Yeah. But he was an exchange student and he come, Pat had been over there for whatever that, that exchange thing is, yeah. I think it's two weeks, three weeks. Yeah. And then he come and turned to Pat. But uh, I mean, Pat said to me at the time, he says it was like been in long cash. He says you were locked up. <laughs> <laughs> they closed the house <laughs> at night. There were <laughs> some or whatever sort of people. The father uh, worked with the railway in France and he had to be away at five in the morning uh, or something. So everything was everything sleeping was early, Ollie? Nine o'clock. Aye. And Pat, he didn't know where the night uh. was going to go. But I got him back here anyway and uh, he wanted to see. He was with us down here. He called in and worked about the fact that he wanted to see how this uh, fellow man went. Nothing to do, but he followed me down. This time he was staying in our house because yeah. Pat, I think Pat had enough. Or Pat, <laughs> Pat was going somewhere else. So I says, I'll take you in, Bruno. Don't worry, you can come. <laughs> yeah, he, he'd already texted or phoned at that time to see that he, he would like to come. So I knew him fairly well and kept him right. So he come and stayed in our house. So on the Sunday night, I uh, went down. He came down with me to start the film and all. And Anne says to me, don't forget at nine o'clock, come up and sort I had something to sort out in the house. Yeah. I said, I'll be up at five to nine and I'll be away again. So but I was working on the 20-minute reel. So uh, I got Bruno and all and showed him the procedure. And he got the same training as me. <laughs> he got a, 20 he, minutes. 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, it was a good long time, Ollie, to get an apprenticeship, wasn't it? 20 I'm minutes. You, he, <laughs> and he, he didn't do too bad. The only thing is... <laughs> Did he put on some hard movie he didn't, too? He didn't want to start the reel, or he didn't want to be there at the finish. Uh, He'd have watched the film on through, and if anything happened, he would have told Roseanne down below, and she'd have phoned me up. Yeah. They'd say, where you up? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the, uh, I left at five to nine, and I left. I says, Bruno, this machine now is next. I says, when that and finish, you watch for the changeover, and go down till zero, or till three, I think it is, it tips over, and then you hit the other button comes on. So, but I says, I'll, I'll be back before it's over. So, uh, so <laughs> I 
I goes up to the house and I don't mind what happened. Something happened up at the house that I was that wee bit axed. <laughs> and I come round and I said, and I need a run. I says, this thing will soon be over. I was trying to time 20 minutes. Uh, it had been a shorter read. Uh, so it had. <laughs> <laughs> and I went down. So I did. And just as I opened the door, this thing started to creep up me like a snake to the film. No way. It had come down the stairs. No way, Holly. Oh, <laughs> it come down the stairs. <laughs> what happened was the bottom rail didn't pick up when it went through. I didn't when he catch. started it. I think he maybe missed the starting button. And was, 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 was Mr. Fleury all in the Mr. middle of us? Fleury. Or? <laughs> He's still looking at it. The, the, the thing was, the film was still going on. Aye. He took the change over but the other, uh, the, 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 the new, new one didn't do the pickup. <laughs> and it, it was still showing on the screen, but it was still all going. Instead of going on to the bottom spill, it was going down the stairs. Oh, Jesus. You know where the shop is there now. <laughs> That's where it was all land. And I come and <laughs> I opened the door, the front door of the cinema, and it was coming out around Roseanne. She says, what's going on? And it is a usual complaint. <laughs> I says, I don't know. So I got up around all the stuff, threw it all to the one there. <laughs> You know, still looking out the window at the film. <laughs> <laughs> because that machine that went off was at the door. He that, never noticed it even oh, went that's down. That's And I gathered yeah, all up put, that's put all those. So it was, that, was, that was two of the things that happened in my film days. And, but, you, but you became a professional at it. And, then, and just going back then, Ollie, to your young days, mm-hmm. you know, um, growing up in, uh, in the town, uh, how many were in your house? I know my mum, uh, you have a sister, Mar- Maring, is it? Or Maring. Maring. Is Kathleen. Aye, uh, Maring, I think. And Anna went well, in your age. No, my mum. Ma- ma- ah, she grew you up, she was at your age, or uh, your mother's age. Aye, uh, because uh, I know that she had visited Ma the old time, right, and their friends. Right. So what was it like then? Where were you at in the whole scale of your family? Were you in the middle? or? Well, there was, there, was, there was actually 12 of a family, but one of the youngsters died at two months. Mm. But then there was uh, Jim, would have been the first, in 1932. Jim was the first boy. John was the next. And then there was Brenton. There were three boys. And then the first girl was Anna, that one that your mother knew. Yeah. And the next one after that was Jojo. Jojo. And then Harry oh. and Colin. Colin. Myself. Maureen, Kathleen, and Eamon. Sort of a mixture, you know. My dad was fond of all the Dolly mixtures. Too. There was a lot of do- do- Dolly. There was a lot of Dolly mixtures there, all right. A lot of curtain going on. But hey, and, and them days, I suppose, big families it was seemed to be the thing, Ollie, didn't it? You know, well, we, was we, that right or wrong? You know, in yeah, that, that well, all, all, all the families in different times. That time, I remember even Father Collins. Well, he wasn't PP at the time, but he was all the time on about that. Uh, there had to be the Sacred Heart picture at that time. He had a sign, had a sign, every family that was having a youngster. And their name was always, there was two lines left on it. And the line, he, the time I had, jo- or we had Joanne, uh-huh. he came up to sign ours. So he did, and he put the, he put the Joanne's name that close to the start of the line. I thought he was going to go back into the Secret Heart picture. <laughs> <laughs> he, says, <laughs> he says, if you're like your father, he says, that line will be filled. <laughs> <laughs> there was eleven of us. Oh, he was leaving a better room. He uh-huh. could have maybe just been better putting on the initials there, uh, and giving space. Because your brother Jim too was a big Jim. GA oh, uh, man, Jim was uh, and, uh, county board. and involved in the GA for many, many years. Mm-hmm. And there, when the All Ireland happened That's and right. all, isn't he that was right, Ollie? He was the, the jersey carrier and the signing the check. Yeah, <laughs> and at them days, washing the jerseys too. I'm sure. Oh, why his wife Nilla? Nilla don't know all that. God rest her was the. She'd done all the rest and you used to see it. If you were going through Maharap, you used to see him come down for a slack nail. Daddy must be playing on Sunday. Look, look at Jim and Wiggins playing. They're all in numbers. I thought you were going to say they're playing in Jim's garden. Well, <laughs> there's there's sometimes I thought they were playing on it. <laughs> <laughs> it was that one day. Uh, and so what was it like growing up, you know, younger then and around the town? Was it, Was it? you know, well, um, you, were, you were saying earlier on to me about, you know, not many cars. No, there and, was no cars, but that's why Sunday was a football day on the... Uh, on the town street yeah. after 
between 11 or 12 o'clock in Mass. There was always a free time between that and lunchtime, maybe an hour. We'd have been out kicking ball up and down the street through and nobody had told. The only man would have been about with Joe McBride, making sure you didn't come down put his one day. And, and that's just down there where Burns' shop is now, isn't that right, Ollie? That's where it was. Uh, and mm-hmm. was he, he was a trader, wasn't he, Ollie? He did. Um, Joe McBride in the middle and distributing the middle around the farms. There you go. All the different farmers who yeah. did and yeah, I worked for him for a while too. Sure. There you go. And and so uh, out and about, you're saying playing there. Would there have been many young ones in the town lived in the town then, or was it the the you know the parish was it scattered all? It you know what I mean? The families in six towns in Molina no, and the different funny, parts. Yeah, we never would have seen, as far as the parish was concerned, that part of the every town land seemed to be a parish of its own. Aye. And you would know that even up where your father came Aye. from, yeah. six yeah. towns people yeah. were. So you'd have seen them on a Friday, the fair day. Aye. And that and, would have been. And would, would that uh, been like, say, in the past, you know, would people then have just driven down from all, them, all the town lands into the town? Correct. Yes. On a fr- Friday, if you had a... And one was of, that a, a responsible uh, type, time or would it have been, oh, no, you know, would it have been wild? Or? I, I, I remember uh, even from Cranach or Glenelly, as yeah. you call it, the, uh, there would have been a van load ringing... People, ladies coming over to buy their clothes in Burns and all. There you go. Burns shop was still on the go at that time. Yeah. Not the new one, but the old yeah. one up the town. And when and did that, you know, uh, when was that sort of first found? That was fa- I well, I remember from the 50s, early there you 50s. Go. I, I started school in 1949. Yeah. So, so would that have been John Burns' father? Eddie Burns. Right? Eddie right? Burns and Pat and them's and Granny. Aye. Ah. Ver- was it Vera? I called her now. Perfect. I don't think it was. I can't remember. Yeah, and uh, she was McGee, I think. There you go. Name. So they're they're a they're a a family uh, uh, chain that's been in the town oh, a long yeah. time. Oh, well, well, you could say, Burns and her brothers nearly <laughs> nearly grew their percentage so that from yeah. what it was to what it is. Yeah. And uh, uh, you were part of the Hearn yeah, Brothers yeah, early days, weren't I you, Ollie? Part for of the Hearn Brothers, and, and that was. And under kitchens and all that type of stuff. Yeah, you had your own wee business up the car road. Ah, Isn't that right, no, Ollie? I had the wee shop, the wee shop, but that was handed down to me from Hens for the kitchens, oh, appliances, home appliances. Hi, hi. And how long did that? Uh, did, did that, uh, that only lasted a couple of years because yeah. I went under the bad thing because they'd already closed the one up above, and Michael or someone said to me, you know, you could maybe make a go with that yourself. Ah. And that wee shop's vacant down the town beside me, Pat Gaines. That's right. So I went on there, but now a couple of years was. Was about how it was. Right. Just it wasn't catching on, and HP and all that was starting to go out the one day. Yeah, too, yeah, so. it was just a, it was just off its time. Yeah, and it was and, off its and, time. and then uh, so you just mentioned Mary Pat Keynes uh, mm-hmm. there, the, the pub which is now owned by Hearn Bars. That's and, right, and it's uh, I think they're extending. They're about. doing a hotel at the back or something. <laughs> I only seen that. Little <laughs> a hotel for uh, 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 I don't know it was a hotel, but That's I'm really a hotel. I, 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 I only guess it's a I'm, hotel. I'm get, it well, well, Jermaine, you'll send it out there that it's going to be a beautiful boutique hotel, <laughs> and we'll find out down the line that it might be something like John, offices. John maybe phoned me to tell me it's not a hotel, it's going to be a <laughs> I, skyscraper. <laughs> it's I, going to be flat to bed. I, it won't I be. actually think they're going to hand it over to me and you for a new radio station in the town. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice to go out on the top of the roof and we'll look down oh, on people? Oh, brilliant. <laughs> and you were saying earlier on there um, that uh, up in the Fair Hall, which has now been done up again. As no, you I notice. see that. I've only seen that lately. On yeah, and uh, it's, a, it's a whole. Uh, Community regeneration, and it's a it's a good job. Uh, you were saying about a, a group of people used to come and uh, set up like a uh, hidden, Clary hidden. Every every year they would have come, you know, or nearly every year, maybe every second year. But I remember Hidden's coming to the town was a a big event, like an yeah. all these new plays, so all, all these short plays, maybe made up things that they'd done. It would have lasted maybe an hour, an hour and a half, and then a couple of nights of this competition thing for the, the worst thing in there was time. <laughs> I won it three times. Did you won it three times? Yeah. No. <laughs> you didn't tell me that earlier on. No, because it was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Have you still got the trophy, you know? Wow, well, right. <laughs> well, the toilet at the back. Do you know, and, and the reason the reason I brought that up to you, Ollie, was that um, you were a man that, that took part in plays from a young age. Yeah. Because uh, I was sitting uh, chatting earlier on to... Uh, 
Anne mm. McAllister. Sure. And Anne was saying about early plays and the scene one with uh, a couple of your brothers were on it and mm. yourself. Uh, Brenton. Aye, Brenton. And, Dressed and, up as a woman. And, uh, <laughs> and you, you, were you, uh, uh, I think it was uh, the one I seen, were you a, a puppy dog or? Uh, no, a, that was a friend of your own that was uh, was part of the dog. It was. Um, was it two years part of the dog? No. The dog was made a giant, uh, made <laughs> out of uh, Anselwood. So it was. Yeah. And the neck, Leo Convery made it sort of, and it had a big neck. I was in the front of it with a peep hole, <laughs> and the back end, Seamus was in it, and he was just at my butt, but he was at the back end of the field now. <laughs> and I remember that, <laughs> I remember Father McAnally, God rest him, was putting this, it was a pantomime to Yes. I can't remember yeah. the name of the pantomime, because uh, at that time there was pantomimes every year. But I remember. Um, Cinderella. It might have been Cinderella, or what do they call the other boy that claimed uh, the beanstalk, Jack uh, and the beanstalk. Jack was, and uh, uh, might have been that. Whatever it was, anyway, because we were, as the boys says, we were the ages that was in the mall. But <laughs> Seamus was my back end, anyway. Seamus the, McQuigan? Aye. Aye. Yeah. Della Uncle. Yeah. So the next thing was, there was a, at that time they built a wee thing at the front of the stage, the Gilly Hall, it was a wee place for the, the orchestra. There was uh, Benny. The usual orchestra, Andy McGuigan and Benny, Benny Higgity, wasn't it? Cinderella was Anne Kelly. Aye. Uh, and uh, so... Bernie Kelly too. Yeah. Peter's the fairy Peter queen Mo- was Patricia Devlin. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and uh, there's a whole, there's a whole oh, the, oh, there's a list of stuff. And do you like to know who the fairies were as well? There was, was even not a fairy, or uh, even. <laughs> Sheila Kelly, Bridget Hearn, Katrina Reagan, Theresa Murray, Bridget... Hamill, Treesam Hamill, Angela Devlin, Bridget Kelly, Anne Kelly, and Kathleen Hearn and Mary Kelly. God, uh, do you remember all them? Remember all them, and surely, but sure, uh, it's that long. But with doing different, a pantomime every year, you sort of come now, like I mean, 60 years ago, sure. You, you wouldn't mind. Well, uh, I don't, anyway. Uh, well, no, that is, that, that's one there, just mm-hmm. that was an old one that uh, that you were in. No, right, right. And well, the, the, this one that I remain in particular, the part we had to come in, the dog was the dog was hunting somebody off the stage. That's it, you're the dog, isn't it? And I we were to come around. There you are. That's good, and so it is. I've never seen that. There you are. I'll we'll get you a wee copy of that. No, that's the one, all right. That's it. Do you remember it now? Yeah, I do indeed. Was uh, Martin O'Kane not in it, was he? I'm not sure. That no, the, Martin wasn't one of them, and uh, uh, Brian Donnelly. But I remember the dog and the, our participant in that dog scene was to come in, and we had to do a p- few practice rounds first on a Thursday night because it was going to be on on the Friday night and then the Sunday night. <laughs> yeah. But I remember we to come in, and the, they even had a mark on the stage, you know, where you would do the... The, the, the sw- burn the, the swing around, uh, and... Uh, at the end of it, before we even got it done, Father McAnally thought the size of the dog wasn't going to get turned on the stage. <laughs> so we could lay a comedy to build a wee extra bit on. They put it an extra two foot or three foot onto the end of the stage that we could, I could swing Seamus round. <laughs> but the wee orchestra, then I'd had to go back a bit. So all was at the front was just a board across t- to keep them from the congregation. Yeah. <laughs> Next thing was... <laughs> I comes out to it is and goes to the mark, but whether I overstep my mark, I don't know. This was even with the exit of the <laughs> couple of feet or three uh-huh. feet onto the end of the stage. I swung around so I don't, and all of a sudden I felt myself going down like this. Here. Oh no! And when I looked around, Seamus was lying in with the orchestra. <laughs> 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 the back, he'd fell out of the back. Uh, of the uh, so your first big part then brought sort of, the place down. Uh, right, well, that's everybody. what it's about. That's what it's fa- about. See, the thing that happened about pantomimes: if something funny happened on a night. They automatically put it in the next night again to get the oh, people going. And did you find that a lot with the plays you were in? Oh, all, right? that, there was always, spontaneous things. There was always a thing that uh, made people laugh more than anything. That wasn't funny when we were... Rehearsing it. Rehearsing. Uh, I mean, things I got remember thought funny, and then the next thing it was serious, it was. <laughs> <laughs> but there was, oh, I could go back. I could go back. Oh, you speak away. Do, do you, if you are, if you other wee memories from the plays you were at? Mm, I think that's... I can find other ones, what are the voices again? I can remember uh, John Coffey, God rest John. Uh, this is even nearer now, this is when Father Daly had come. Yeah. And we were doing, uh, we were doing something up in the Gilly Hall too. I, the, um, what do they call it, the Sputnik, the lantern on the moon. 
Oh. So it was. And Father, uh, there's only a wee sketch, it was only going to be five or ten minutes. But John Caulfield and myself were the two men on the moon. Well, you were, but to you give Anders, yeah. Father Day his Jews, like he was in Korea before he came here, if you mind. Yeah. So he came here and, we, and this thing, he was good at putting on the place too. But he had this thing and it was up and it come down and they had blue lights flashing and all. <laughs> and this thing come the whole way down and just sat at the, at the back of the stage. Of course, we were in behind the curtain ready to dive in, so we were coughing and myself. So we come out and we, so we did, and uh, this was even on the practice run. And come out anyway, and I'm supposed to come out and I said, go walking slow and said, I can see. I can see Italy. And I can see France. And Coffee, Coffee he would come and he just said, I see Spain, you know, the next one uh-huh. was going to Germany. Uh-huh. And that was that. So uh, that was all right. But he was always fluffing. He couldn't even <laughs> mean which country he was seeing. <laughs> so, he wasn't. so the night of the day, anyway, Father Day says to me, where's, where's John at? I says, I don't know where he is. So I had to go and look for him, but he had been down the town. <laughs> With a few baths, had he? Out in Reagan, so I, <laughs> I'm in and I'm in. I said, John, I says, you better come quick, Father Day he is in an awful way. About us ready to go on after the interval, and you're not even there. I'll be up in a minute, he says. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get excited or not. So up he come in and, and as he come in. But by this time they had put uh, they put the names on the sleeves of the coat <laughs> so that John wouldn't fluff it lines. Oh, I see, you could see. I said, oh, anyway, so I remember as well, going out there, anyway, so that the Sputnik landed and out come the two astronauts. <laughs> Slowly but surely, and I could see, I could see Italy, and I could see Spain, and I could see France and Coffee, and he was. <laughs> <laughs> and I could see you on my coat. <laughs> <laughs> I could see you on my coat, and there's, there's no names on it. <laughs> So uh, it was that lit, you see, but on the road. Father right. Day was waiting for someone to come up and just threw the coats on us. <laughs> and when you said uh, Father Day good. there, was he was he an influential man then for plays and stuff to happen on? Uh, he was, he was, uh, he, he don't know a lot down in uh, Marion Hall and Kilray, you see. He, yeah. he put on pantomimes too. There you and go. And run dances, of course, as well. Uh, yeah, and apparently oh. they were quite lively dances. Oh, uh, well, he used to do bouncer as well. <laughs> yeah. so he did, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, them talking about him even in my day, they were talking about Father. Uh, uh, and was he an ex boxer? Maybe all the people talking about him. He might have been an, uh, an ex boxer, but. They didn't, there wasn't many argued with them. No, I don't think so. I and, like uh, Father Dairy now, so I did. Yeah, and, and yeah. see, when, when, like, see that for you anyway, like, uh, same with, like, I was chatting to Anne earlier on in the community podcast, I'm sure you've seen some changes in the town over the years. You know, oh, like, and, big time. Because but maybe back in, in the old days, what it, you, you mentioned Heron Brothers there mm. and, uh, and Burns' yeah. uh, uh, two uh, families would have been very mm. integral mm-hmm. to the growth of the town, which is, a, there's a lot of other businesses now has started mm-hmm. the growth of the town and the, and the new generation. Yeah. And we could name so many. That's but right. uh, for you, it was them too. And uh, so was it a lot of farming then, Ollie, in the, the old days? Or, no, was it was. It, or was it more, was well, it the no, work varied, no, uh, what I, is what I, I mean? I would have thought there would have been more farming at that yeah. time. Like, I mean, even to see a horse and cart coming down the street in the 50s and even early 60s, the yeah. tractor coming, it, uh, it was always nice to see a farmer coming in. Maybe the wife would have been sitting on the back of the cart. There you and go. And they were going to the co or they were going to Joe and Bride. He was uh, going for mail and she was going for messages. There you go. And someone was going to Burns's for clothes. Yeah. And... There was no travelling and buses away till Cookstown, Marafelt, or no, there were no, no supermarkets. No, it was no. all local, and I Aye. always thought it was great that way. You knew everybody, too. Uh, there was a good Did you feel yeah, any community, community, community spirit? spirit yeah, Correct. and do you feel that's uh, um, lost a bit? Gone, I think it's gone now because even to meet people nowadays, like I mean, they're, they're buying, you'll see a low, and then they'll 
He was out of stuff. Aye. That's this thing in their hand. Aye, aye. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? It's John Coffey's words for the play. That's just written That's in there. Uh, no, Call her back. Talk, what is that? Well, if we had uh, that in Coffey, we never would have missed our lens. You <laughs> 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 just would have looked at Google. I would have told you them in your ear. And, uh, John but, was a character. And, but I suppose, and uh, you know, in the old days too, I suppose, uh, um, you know, what about dance halls and stuff? You know, you know, the oh, early days. Well, where was where was the sort well, of had, what had you had met? All, even in the yeah. Uh, when I left after I left school in 1959, 60, 61, I'd been setting around. But the uh, Dungiven would have been... The castle. The was castle that was a very popular one with the deepest time people anyway. Uh, because it was only over the money in the mountain. Yeah. And then uh, you know, in different places, I ended up going to Cookstown and you get my yeah. missus. So. Yeah. So Anne's originally from Cookstown. Anne's a Cookstown. And, uh, so where would have been going up there, Ollie? Were they at like town Oh, halls? the town hall. Aye. Uh, it's now the council office on, or in the town, the Glenavon or the Bernavon, I think. Bernavon. Uh, Aye. Uh, ah, there you go. That was the, that was the town hall. Uh, and loads of boys. That would have been on on a Saturday night, you see. Aye. Uh, and then the castle was a Sunday night show. Aye. Uh, most of the young boys around the town here would have been... Cookstown maybe on a Saturday night and, and the other place on a Sunday and night. And yes. what about likes up the Oma direction? There'd be no, 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 nothing, nothing, not direction. Because I, I suppose that you were just an wee... Not very anti-Cookstown was, a, was the news around to Tyrone. Aye. And I'm sure in them days there was a lot of uh, maybe brothers marrying sisters and all that. Do you know what I mean? Uh, going out to the same place. That's uh, right. And like the castle... Uh, and don't give, and I think it's it's an Irish school now. No, oh, I read it's yeah, what it is. It's been changed, uh, yeah. and uh, look, because I've heard uh, uh, different people on about. And then, what about the travel then in them days? Did you get on the bike, or was there a, a cars popping well, up then, or what was happening? You had your wee motorbike. At that or? time, at that time, when I, actually when I was in Hearns, they had a what they call a transit van for taking the workers to their work. There you go. And uh, John Hearn at that time happened to be going with a girl from Cookstown. When I was going around, and I would have got a lift up with John, so I would have. And like John, the Hearns were hard working at that time. They hadn't set up the big business at that time. Yeah. They were st- only starting to build and all. Yeah. So John had uh, would have been up and down. But I remember many a night coming home, and he'd be up like maybe six, half six in the morning, take them boys to their work. He'd do the van and love them back again. And then Frank Hearn and all them and the lorry men. But the... Um, I remember coming home one night at the top of the town and I thought the van was, there was something happening in the van coming along, you know, mm. and I looked over and John's head was... <laughs> oh, Jesus. There's someone who's head. Just said, Peter Mickledown, just and I put my hand over to catch the steering wheel. What Jeez. are you doing? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um, Saving my life, I Oh, says. my God. And that was the hard work probably then. But um, um, I'm saying them days you could have left, there was always somebody going and whoever was going, like they said... You want, would you like to take a run to Cookstown or would you uh, want to take a run to the castle uh, or whatever? Uh, it was pretty planned. Niall Reagan would have been another gate man. Uh, I'm in our column, God is. Uh, they would have been gate men for a Sunday night at the castle. There you go. And so everybody had their own wee place. They and what would wee. what would have been going on in them? Would that have been the shoe band oh, time out? Shoe band, surely. So the Brian Call and ones like that, you know. Yeah. And would that have been the town hall, Cookstown and and the castle? Well, would the, have been? The, the, a lot of the I well, at that time there were there were there were everywhere, so there would have been Town Hall, Flamingo was another one, of course, but it's mostly the bigger ah. Where was the flamingo? The Where flamingo was that? Was in Ballymena, so Ballymena. It was in the middle of the town somewhere. Ah. I mean, been at it a couple of times just, but that wasn't as popular from here to Ballymena. Too far away, are uh, yeah. Too and far uh, away. and because uh, I know that uh, I suppose in them days. Uh, there, there wouldn't have been as much transport available. There was no, no. such thing as buses. And taxis, well, would there have been taxis then? Or there was taxis, but nobody, nobody bought. Taxi men didn't want to be going out at that time of the night. Aye. Uh, so they didn't, uh, I felt, I don't know, uh, they would have to go. A taxi man, maybe a married man, he was hardly going to go and sit outside the hall all night for a crowd of young boys acting aged. <laughs> or locking a Kurt. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all right. You you married your Kurt, so that's all right, darling. <laughs> that was, you know, and... Uh, well, and then, I showed us uh, earlier on when we were chatting about the cinema, you also then went up to Cookstown Cinema. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, how many years then were you there, so, Ollie? Oh, gosh. I only left, and I think it was in 92, or 92, 2000. Yeah, 2002, I think it was. Yeah. But I was, uh, I had already, as an answer when you're, a, when you're in a profession, the word you surround what you've done. Uh, but I had been... Uh, 
the postponement closed a long time, so yeah. it closed away back, I think, in the 80s or so. And uh, they built a new one in Cushing, but I had known our boy just in one of the chip shop in Cookstown. And uh, he was a projectionist. He knew Peter Mullen well, you see. Ah. And I remember being up one night at the chip shop, and he says, uh, Young and Green, and he says, You'd be interested to know that they're building a new cinema down the town here. And I said, It's not right. He says, I. He says, They'll be looking an operator, you know, where that. I says, Right. He says, he says, Give it a try. So I went down to Columbia Eastwood, and uh, Columbia said, Come up on uh, Tuesday night. They were fitting the place only at the time, too. It was only mm-hmm. open. He says, Come up on Tuesday night to see the men fitting the machines and that. And by this time, instead of them having, and I, I fell in love with it right away, instead of <laughs> was it all up to eight date? reels, <laughs> everything was one big reel. Oh, brilliant. All joined, no leaders, no boys shouting up at you, hey, uh, there's another reel. Uh, so that would have went on for the full film. You could have put two and a half hours of film wow. to three hours on this reel, wow. and that would have went through the one big projectors. And like you would have seen some amount of films in your day. No. Obviously, you love film. Love like, film. And, and even now doing films, like I would still film anything going on, and the voices are warm going up the wall, anything. Uh, <laughs> and you were just chatting about that earlier on, that you have a, an extensive uh, uh, coverage of a lot of things no, uh, from I, the past. And uh, stuff so and hopefully maybe uh, someday the people in the community will maybe see that, Ollie, and see. Well, as you said, you've got one one that looks at what it's like to be a, a parent growing up with yeah. your, your, mm-hmm. your daughter and right. right through. And you've got other stuff connected to back in time that mm-hmm. I suppose, as you say, and rightly so, it's important yeah. that, that that type it's of kept. knowledge is kept. You know, yeah. I totally agree with you because... The old faces even <coughs> now, I'm sure a lot of people would have been interested in that, you know, and yeah. I, have, I have a couple of those too. Although they're, they're on webcam now, I think, yeah. 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 the old faces, you know, way back. <coughs> That's the, interesting. Ones that people never seen, you know, I have stuff that... And back I have films that belong to um, what did they call them? The one the uh, chemist shop, Hugh Kelly's. Um, Phil McGarty. Phil McGarty's. Yeah. See, he had films. Him and John Burns would have been their Cubs was all the one age at that time. Yes. And I think <coughs> Phil McGarty done a lot of film on that. So he did with the Burnses and that. And I have a lot of East Sunny films. You know, yeah, you know, I, I they look cool, all of them wee ones. You know, I, the wee I like to see them when you see the flicker coming through them, but I put sound over them, you know, just Brilliant. because there was no sound in them. Ah. So I just did you sing a wee song? No, did you? No, 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 no. I don't, I didn't want, I wanted them to <laughs> after sell all, after all that good singing down and no, down. No, and but I wanted them to sell, so I decided not to sing. How did the sale? <laughs> Still in the attic. <laughs> <laughs> I seen a big poster for him, but it was not that quick. No, and, uh, but sorry, and and I'm just uh, on that that behalf. I, I think you're right. It's uh, it's really important. Like even this these here we were chatting about, mm. and and it's been brilliant that you've been in and all. That's all about community, and it's all about oh. the historical content mm. of this parish yeah. and the people that have been involved in this parish. Mm. Very important people like yourself. That uh, and. The one, the one thing I suppose, or two things I would ask is, did you ever keep any posters from the past, or ha- and what would your favourite film be? Because I seen the thing one time. Don't tell me out live that you have a poster from a nineteen such and such. People might go, "Whoop! I want one of them." But did you ever keep any posters in memorabilia? Well, funny you should mention uh, that. Turn I'm, off all microphones. I'm not all cameras no. off now. And first, it's a sad end to this. Oh no! But unfortunately, our. Fortunately, at the time when I was in that cinema, even from Cookstown, I would have collected the big posters. James Bond, all the different ones way back to even the old, some of the old films. Some of the older films, I got the things lying down in the old shed under the cinema in Hearns, and I was still there. No way. And I took them, I took them with them. Nobody was interested. They were going to rot in the place. So I bumped <coughs> the mental thing and away with them. Anyway. But when I moved... To Cookstown, then they were only lying in the lying in the first house we were in Fort Hill, and then gradually, uh, just, I don't know, I just they, they, just were taking, they were just taking up space. No, yeah. but I, I, I just ended up dumping. I don't oh. think I have one left even. Oh too. no! And funny you mentioned about the posters. There was one on in one of those uh, sales the other night, and I said to myself, "Gosh!" And I stretched up two hundred and fifty quid or something. Wow. 
You know the way they buy them. Oh, I, and some of them old ones are really, really valuable. Oh, you know. Well, sure. <coughs> but oh, I suppose um, you couldn't keep them because life and uh, times. Well, and all even if they've been folded, they're glossy. They were that glossy type of thing, and after lying maybe on top of other for. 25, 30 years, when you'd open them out again, they would just crack. Ah. So they, ah. they had to be in good condition. Yeah. If they hadn't been rolled up. Yeah. Which is the proper way to do it. If you have posters, roll them up all the time. Ah. Don't fold them, because that cracks the thing. There so you go. The thing. And, and, so, and, and, and I suppose there was, uh, and did they come in the wee, you know the way you see sometimes the boxes and all around, and all the different, you know, was there much marketing? I mean, well, in I the old days, the there is now. I yeah. always got them coming, <coughs> if, if they were taking them to the wall, I would have, they were through in the, in the office and ah. the cinema and I would took a couple every so often. Just <laughs> ones that I've seen there was something good. I didn't like the animation ones, you know, I always took something. Ah. Maybe like James Bond and them boys. The, the, other, the older yeah. stuff. <clears throat> well, look, I have a wee thing here. Um, it was from uh, the cinema, 19, uh, uh, I think it's, uh, Anne had it, 1977. Uh, and... Uh, 1977. Uh, well, that's what's down here. Was that Dripperstown or was it Cookstown? No, it had to be Dripperstown. This was the last, the last showing. This is the oh, last right, showing. Oh, right, right, right. And uh, so I'll, I'll... Must just look at it. Let me see, all right. It's the last film on, was it? There's a wee part out here, you know, you walk by and you can do a wee jig. No, right, right. I must have right. No. Okay, <laughs> uh, Mr. McGuigan, here's your, here's your, here's your license now, there you go. So there you are there, Ollie. Cinema. And there's, Dippers 10. And there's some of the films. Doors open 7.30 Sundays. The man's in the the right to a few you should miss it. <laughs> or alter the programme. Yeah. <laughs> would there have been people come maybe a bit tight, Ollie, to go on? Would they have been refused, would they? Well... And um, funny you mentioned that I was thinking about uh, John Hearn and uh, the bouncer thing. <laughs> See, and, and the old the old one down in their yard, the first picture house, that was just like a like a barn, so yeah. it was. But uh, the pay box from half seven, Brady would have been in there giving out the tickets. Eight o'clock, the film started. Half eight, the first show was over. The ads was on quarter to nine, and then after the box. The wee box was close, so it was. But Tuner's bar didn't close till nine o'clock. <laughs> so I remember one particular, I'm not mentioning his name, but one particular because he's deceased. But uh, I laughed when it happened. And there was a Christmas tree up in the, down in the office, or beside the office, as you go one of the doors. And uh, I remember John saying, the, the door was only closed, and he, he left it open a wee bit and so, Brady says, what are you leaving the room? He says, I'm waiting to see if this boy comes in it again after the, <laughs> after the door closes, the pay box. So we waited on him and the next thing, the pat that put the game, the boy coming around the corner and John just stepped out straight in. He says, where do you think you're going? He says, I'm going into the picture house. Why? He says, well, you're not going to. Why? He says, because... I'm not letting you in. You'll never stop me, he says. And right enough, he <laughs> And he hit John. John went under the Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> tumbled the whole lap tree. Oh, no. But they got up and they argued and he didn't get in anyway. <laughs> but John, unfortunately, there wasn't it wasn't as fit for him as he thought he was. <laughs> the other boy was tight. <laughs> but he just caught John off guard. I don't think John expected him to swing so soon. But brilliant, brilliant. I remember that as well, coming out in this Christmas tree lying all over the place. <laughs> well, uh, I'm sure there's been <coughs> uh, people that have attended it and uh, have all their own stories, Ollie, you know? Oh, I'm, and sure there's many I'm, I'm sure whenever this year goes out, uh, there will be people that'll pop up with their own stories, you know oh, what I mean. Well, sure. And uh, <clears throat> but what I want to I want to say to you, you're now retired. Retired. Yeah. What is what you know? Some people you don't like the word retirement, you know, because you mm -hmm. know you seem to be going all your life and always dabbling in things, and, still going. and you're still going and still being creative, capturing yeah. all the 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 films and stuff. I still like film and everything. That's brilliant, you know, and. I think you should probably get it all together because mm -hmm. I'd, I'd be very interested to see some of that. You know, yeah. You'd have stuff captured from different eras. And I think, you know, the world we're in now, Ollie, and especially with lockdown, I don't know yeah. if you'd agree, that uh, people are reflecting more. 
mm-hmm. looking, you know, they're out of nature. They're they're yeah. looking at their pictures. They're looking yeah. at the past, and uh, and even yourself, you were mm-hmm. uh, you're gathering all the pictures of the McGuigan family yeah. at the minute. And how's that all going? Like I know well, you're a big clan, and uh, <laughs> like uh, you know uh, that too. Uh, you know, uh, you're a big. <laughs> Some of us are smaller, but <laughs> uh, you know, well, and uh, I know, but you're a big clan and a connected well, clan. I find out now that. With the, some of the old films that I've, I've, some of my nephews or nieces or some of them was showing a wee film at home or something they'd say they would put on the Facebook Ollie I never I never we never seen that you know they uh-huh. think they've never seen it but I'd actually it had been given to Jim or some uh-huh. of the, some of the uh-huh. brothers and sisters uh-huh. it never was shown to them uh, and now when they see it it's, they're just mad to get uh-huh. it to uh-huh. them. and then somebody that they know sees it too and they want to Get a copy, so that's why it's a I connectability, isn't it? Copy, copy it onto DVD now and then give it to them. Brilliant. But the most poignant thing of the lot is when somebody dies mm. and they turn up on your uh, film and you say to yourself, oh, there's, look, at, look how happy they were there. Ah. They burned it and Peter Mullen and the ones like that. Ah. Because they were at my wedding. There and when go. that comes up, somebody always says, oh, I loved that scene. It, it that. Tr- triggers a wee memory of it. surely. And, and I always say to myself, look at, look at them couple. At uh, that time, uh, and then, and and when life was good and uh, life was full of them, and well, life's still good, but it's not so good. If you know uh, what I mean by that, uh, it's still uh, good enough. Because I, I, I suppose with the one thing about get, growing older in life, there's uh, people we grew up but may not be there along with us no, the whole time. And, no, and well, that's even even this past since this virus came in, I it's uh, the guys that I knew or grew up with, like the Oliver Kelly and. Seamus and the ones that got there. Yeah. Like when you go into the graveyard and go around their graves, you think to yourself, how long have I to go? Like, ah, well, you you're still that, clocking away. You and still you're... say to yourself, like, I mean, time's running out. Get some more films on the go. Uh, <laughs> you could be her, tar- you could be her, 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 you know. the the. But then the thing they got there too, Ollie, is that's keeping you active. No, oh, you the have mind, an, as long as the mind's active, I always think you're, yeah, you're good enough to you, you have a You have an active mind, you have a creative mind, mm-hmm. and uh, you're using that to keep going with, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, filming. And, and I'm sure, like, uh, like uh, uh, Anne McAllister's done for the podcast, same um, thing, still playing the piano, um, still, you know, listening to music. Mm, I've lots of ones around, you know, the choir even, you know. You know, and you, you'll, you'll know all that there, and I um, suppose, but... And for any young uh, people out there uh, from the, the parish listening and all, I know there's a lot of uh, sport and all, there's mm-hmm. a lot of activities. In the t- I was just saying earlier on, there's a lot of things in, in Drippertstown Balance Green now you can get access to that maybe weren't there years ago, and uh, mm-hmm. which is a great thing mm-hmm. uh, to get that interest in creativity and sport or whatever else it is. Um, did you do much sport just on, on the habits? Very sport? little sport. Ah. I wasn't very sportive, so I wasn't. But, then but you, I played Gilly against the boys, just like the rest of the McGuigans. Yeah. Were you had a few brothers were good at it. Column was yeah. that. County man, he yeah. was a county player. And Eamon Jojo was good, and Eamon was good. They were all well. When you when you went to school down there, as I say, at the town there, or even any other country boys too, were all good players. Tony McCormick, Money Nina, yeah. James Devlin, all them guys. Six towns, Tommy McKenna, and I could name dozens, but. Was that the type of the time that the Ballon Scream would have won the county final all Around about years the ago? 70, after the, I noticed after the sixties. Palmer Screen really took to the, when they built the new club, started to go for football big time. Gain confidence. They were, they were yeah. all, they were all, I always, well, as the man says, you follow your own team, but yeah. you always thought there's nobody <laughs> like them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody beat them. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> with uh, a quarter of the size Paris. Yeah, that's right. No, <laughs> but, it was always a good wee Paris for football, so it was. Yeah, and I suppose that was something you were drawn to. Like Eamon, uh, your brother Eamon was a great soccer player as mm-hmm. well and, and uh, took to, you know, the Celtic yeah. and all that there. And that was something, was mm-hmm. was big time. And you you, you mentioned your uh, brother Colin got mm-hmm. as the main column and remember mm-hmm. running around Johnny Burns's as well, the snooker, mm-hmm. the snooker hall. And uh, so, Ollie, would you have any advice for young people out there? I know now that the the, the job you had and the, the cinema is now uh, digitally done. I yep. found out earlier on from the gentleman to my right. Yeah. <coughs> was telling me. But and I'm uh, a cassette now and it's bye-bye me and another boy and cooks it in uh, our patty. And, 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 and Florin, Florin, or Florin, <laughs> French dude. Bruno Fleury. Bruno Fleury. <laughs> 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 he sounds like a yogurt. <laughs> I, 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 if he was a yogurt, I'd say strawberry. Me, I, I ate him many of them <laughs> 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 It'd be like a strawberry yogurt, Ollie, wouldn't it? Uh, no, you've been absolutely brilliant. Uh, and as I say, for anybody out there, uh, uh, 
uh, I suppose, uh, that doesn't know Ollie. They'll know him now and the world will know you. And uh, you're a great person and thank you for coming on. And I remember just on behalf, before you go, uh, you came in one time with Santa Claus and do you remember the humbug sweets Ollie used yep. to get? Um, I suppose you wouldn't do it now by getting a handful and throwing them down uh, uh, the floor and, and they or the hall down Cahor. That's right. And uh, them throwing them down the steps. I didn't know much about rugby. the young ones running after them. <laughs> I didn't know much about rugby, but I knew what a headbutt was when it got down to a certain level. It was deadly. Uh, if you wanted one way to, to read out a hall, that was one way to do it. And that was, that was the time, Ollie, uh, um, I don't know, did they call them bazaars, Ollie? You know that you know there was yeah. teddy bears. And you bought tickets and, right. were, and you put the big wheel. Was that the, it? The local local bazaar up in the Gilly Hall. Up yes, yeah. and you could have won teddies and That's sweets. Right. That's and, right. Uh, uh, and uh, there was a rickety wheel, so there was to go around, and you bought the cloakroom tickets. Exactly. So you did, and uh, your number was called out, and then next thing is two would land up. Uh, same tickets, but you had to give the serial number and somebody would land it up. Young ones, see, it was young uh, ones. Uh, the mother would have been said, oh, that's her ticket. Run, run. <laughs> and then you get two or three young ones running at the one time. Different colour ticket. Uh, different colour. <laughs> not only a different colour, different serial number. I had it the serial number. Because <laughs> they wanted it so bad to want. But, you know, they were great... Uh, I know they were simple, but they were well effective no, gowns, Ollie, right. weren't they? They were good, they were good. I and did the prizes that. just come from people donating them, or was it, uh, you oh, know? Oh, it was mostly local stuff you've answered, it was. Yeah. yeah. The and shops would give a lot of stuff, Burns and uh, whatever. Yeah, because I know there was shops. always the super prize. No. Wasn't there, the there one at the end? The hamper. The hamper. At the end. The, the end. big one. The big one. Yeah. Everybody was standing there. Got the oh. extra sheets and all for I, it. I got locked up with that one night and had a date before I got out of here. <laughs> 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 I thought you were going to say that you were ambushed by you in the, you in the hamper. <laughs> I didn't want to be ambushed. <laughs> uh, so to be honest, you've had a few bits and pieces of things you were supposed to mind oh, over the I years, did. Did. and why not? Oh, I'm coming back now. You see, but me, me, I'm getting my old mind getting guilty. So ah, I know, I know, I know. Confessions, is, confessions isn't enough. Anymore. No, no more. <laughs> you need to just <laughs> tell it out there. Uh, no, Ollie, you were absolutely brilliant. I don't know if I forgot anything to ask you, but uh, you were class coming on and I thank you so much You're and I, I would say um, that um, for me I would look forward some days to seeing your, your all your wee bits and pieces of film because yeah. I think you should put it on and I think mm -hmm. that uh, it should be logged uh, so from me over on this side, Paddy Glasgow to Ollie McGuigan complete other legend local uh, local actor yes. thespian I know who are you talking to? Projectionist. I'm looking for the Paddy Glasgow boy, but I don't know where he is, Ollie, so don't worry about well, it. Well, I'm looking for him too because I have to get paid for the same room. <laughs> you tell me two wheat and scones and a wheelbarrow. I don't know how they combine. <laughs> oh, that's right, the oh, pot dear. of jam. Uh, no. So, Ollie, you've been a star. I don't I don't think I've left anything out and, uh, uh, on behalf of it all. No. So I'll give you a round of applause and thank you so much, Ollie, for coming no, in to see if me. If anybody wants to learn how to show films or how not to show films, I'm your man. If anybody out there is getting married <laughs> and they want to go old styley, cut yeah. a hole in the wall for That's Ollie, right. and uh, peep he'll, out, he'll peep <laughs> out, and he'll wave at you. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, I know you would say, Ollie, it's just I suppose too uh, before we go that um, with so many game, you know, games out there now and yeah. new new things of games. Uh, um, the film industry, like I suppose the music industry, is mm -hmm. uh, looking at new ways and stuff. Uh, uh, what advice would you give to young people to say, you know, why they should get into films and what what it done for you as a, an individual all them years, seeing all them brilliant pictures yeah. over the years? Well, I even when I look at television today, I still say to myself, look at me, there's nothing on today that I would look at that I would fancy mm -hmm. as I did way back when I was younger. Yeah. Because those older films were all... True, a lot of them are true stories, mm -hmm. whereas now there's all fiction and yeah. it's made up stuff. So yeah. it is. And even the, the the cinema, the the whole image of them all oh, films. So all the young ones and it is. I you, you, everybody could make a film of their, their own. Mm. You know, you, you, all you need is a camera and away you go into the hillside. There's a lot of the boys around town here at the miniature. Yeah. Go out to the mountains and take photos. Yeah, yeah. And and whatever. That's right, that's right, that's right. And, and it, not, I always think they're, they're, they're worth looking at to that. Then. You're Somewhere. right, you're right. And they know a lot about the uh, the, the mountains. That's uh, um, young Raymond Brady you're on about, that's all the right. pictures he puts no, up. Yeah. And he knows his history about the areas he's yeah. in, Ollie. That's he right. talks about the mountains. And that's always quite interesting because mm -hmm. sometimes you just see something, you just see the name of the mountain and you don't know the history behind it mm -hmm. and, and how old it is and what connection it actually has to the people in the parish. Well, well the reason I like it so much is because uh, 
You've heard of the Mad Hooties? Yes. Well, my great-great-grandpa would have been a Mad Hootie. There you go. He was the guy that jumped to the Eagle's Rock and thought he could fly. Do you remember that <laughs> yeah, story? Yeah, that's right. That's With right. the 26 geese or whatever it was tied, the feathers of the 26 geese. Um, he, he, he flew all right from the top to the bottom and broke his two legs. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> but then, that was in the 80s or whatever it was. Uh, but, but that's 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 amazing. And uh, but then that's your clan. That's, yep, the Hootie um, way, the mad Hooties. I told that uh, at, a, at a wedding one day, um, John Paul's column son's wedding up in Fernanda, and uh, they were looking at each other. Who's this guy? I think he's filmed. I mean, if it's boy jumping off a roof, and then he jumped to the Eagles Rock, thought he could fly, and then two half doors. They called us the half door mad Hooties, half door McGuigans. But he, um, I ended up anyway that uh, the boy, one of the guys, and the, it was at the wedding, come forward to me after, and he says to me, he says, Do you know that those people that was, some of those people that was there thought you were. You were trying to be funny, he says. But I know that story. And he says, that's the bird of Armagh. He says, we have it. We have it. And he was from Armagh. There you go. So he says, that's good to know somebody that belonged to that era. Uh, I said, well, I didn't belong to it. <laughs> you're the bloodline. Me people. I'm uh, the bloodline. And that's good. Like, And even now there's the Hootie's Way where people can, as tourists can, uh, yeah, and there was a book the out about him, wasn't there, right. all in years ago? Somewhere as well. And uh, they say Mad it's... Hootie. They say it's a very limited edition book. But mm -hmm. we will not say Mad Ollie or Mad Paddy. Nope. We will say, from Aye. my side, respect <laughs> from Paddy and respect from... Have a nice day, everybody. <laughs> Have a nice day, everybody, from Ollie, who's just back from Alabama. Alabama, here I come. Take care. <laughs> right. Thank Bye -bye. you, Ollie. Thank you, Paddy. Thank Thanks you. for everything. That was brilliant. Good. Thank you, Ollie.